Hey, what's up everybody? Molten Mage here, and this is my Battle for Azeroth Mount Guide Part 2. For every mount in this video, I have provided coordinates of each of their locations, timestamps of each specific mount, and the link to Part 1 of this guide in the description down below. The first mounts we're going to look at are from Najatar. To unlock Najatar, you'll first need to unlock World Quest and Battle for Azeroth, and complete the quests The Uniting for Kul'Tiras for Alliance, and Uniting for Zandalar for Horde. Once these prerequisites are complete, you'll be able to get the starting quest that takes you into Najatar. The Alliance starting quest is the Wolf's Offensive from Greymane, and the Horde starting quest is the Warchief's Order from the Thanos. After these quest lines are complete, you will unlock Najatar. The first mount we are going to look at is the Inkscale Deepseeker. To get this mount, you'll need to earn 150 Najatar Battle Commendations. To do that, head to Najatar with War Mode on and compete in the Battle of Najatar PvP event and kill at least one enemy player. If you win the battle, you'll get a minimum of 5, but up to 10 accommodations. And if you lose, you only get 2. The other way to get these accommodations is by killing rares in Najatar with War Mode on. After you get 150 Najatar Battle Commendations, you can purchase the Ink Scale Deep Seeker from your faction's Najatar PvP Quartermaster. Next is the Crimson Tide Stallion. The first step in getting this mount is unlocking the world quest for Najatar, then going to this location here and speaking to the NPC Merle. He will give you a quest called A Safer Place, and then the quest called No Backs. After you complete both quests, you will need to speak to your faction's Benthic Vendor and purchase a Benthic Cloak until you receive an Ashari Storm Surger Cape. Once you have this cape, you will be able to purchase the four Occultist Pinky Fingers and two Pulsating Bloodstones required for the mount. To get the items required to be able to purchase the Cultist Pinky Finger and Pulsating Bloodstones, you will need to purchase various other items from the four other Murloc vendors at your faction's camp. Follow the purchase order that I have listed on the screen to be able to get these items. The third item you will need is Hungry Herald's Tentacle Taco. To get the taco, you will need to head to this location here and make sure to equip the Ashari Storm Surger Cape. You then will need to complete the Murlaco NPC event. If the event is up, you will see two Naga that have Merlaco locked in a cage. Kill the two Naga, and then Merlaco will be a vendor that you can purchase the taco from. He will only be up for 5 minutes. Once you have the four Cultist Pinky Fingers, two Pulsating Bloodstones, and Hungry Herald's Taco, you will then need to keep checking daily with your Ashari Cape on to see when Merle will sell them out. Next is the Snapdragon Kelp Stalker for Horde, and Deep Coral Snapdragon for Alliance. To get the Snapdragon Kelp Stalker, you will need to level the Bodyguard Neri to level 20. You can do that by picking her up as your follower for the day and completing the daily quest that she gives you. Then once she is level 20, she will give you the quest called Good Girl. Upon completion of that quest, you will be rewarded with the mount. To get the Deep Coral Snapdragon, you will need to level the Bodyguard Hunter Akana to level 20. You can get him to level 20 the same way as the Horde version of the Bodyguards, and once he is level 20, he will give you the quest called Wild Tame. Upon completion of that quest, you will be rewarded with the mount. Next is the Ancoan Wave Ray and Unshackled Wave Ray. To get the Ancoan Wave Ray, you need to become exalted with the Najatar Alliance Faction Ancoan. And for the Unshackled Wave Ray, you need to become exalted with the Najatar Horde Faction Unshackled. And for both mounts, you will need to obtain 250 Mana Pearls. You can earn Reputation and Mana Pearls from the World Quest offered daily in the zone, from daily quests offered at your faction's base, and killing rares within the zone. For the Ancoan Wave Ray, once you have the rep and mana pearls, you will need to purchase it from Artisan Okata. And for the Unshackled Wave Ray, you will need to purchase the mount from Finder Pruck. You can ride both of these mounts on both factions once you purchase them. Next is the Silent Glider. This mount has a less than 1% chance to drop off the rare Soundless. He has approximately a 6-8 to eight hour respawn timer. He spawns at these locations here. You can only attempt to get this mount from Salus only once per day. Next is Fabius. To get this mount, it will require that you have the toy called Selfie Camera. Once you have the toy, you will need to wait approximately 2-8 to eight hours for it to spawn in these locations here in Najatar. Once Fabius is spawned, you need to get your Selfie Camera and take a selfie with him. If you complete the task right, the mount will be rewarded to you directly in your bags. So to be safe, make sure to take multiple selfies with him. Next is the Royal Snapdragon. This mount has a low chance to drop from either the Paragon Cache and Cohen Supplies or Unshackled Supplies. You can earn these caches by being exalted with either faction and earning 10,000 extra reputation with them. Keep earning these caches until you get the mount. The next set of mounts are from the Zone Mechagon. 
To unlock Mechagon, you will have to complete the Nazatar opening questline. Once you have that completed, the Horde will need to speak to Gazlo, who is located next to the Flight Master in Duzar Lore, and he will give you the quest called The Legend of Mechagon. The Alliance will have to pick up the same quest, but from Tink Master Overspark, located next to the Flight Master in Borlas. This quest will get you started on a quest chain that you will need to complete. Once completed, you can start working towards Mechagon Mounts. The first Mechagon mount we are going to look at is the Scrapforge Mecha Spider. To get this mount, you will need to complete the daily quest line called Making a Mount. To do that, you will need to pick up the starting quest called Shop Project from Recycler Kerchunk, located here in Mechagon. Once you complete that quest, you have to wait until the next day to get started on the next quest, as each quest in this quest line is time gated daily. The quest chain is only 12 days long, and the last quest called Drive It Away Today will reward you with the mount. Next is the Rust Bolt Resistor. To get this mount, you'll need to get exalted with the Rust Bolt Resistance. You can gain reputation with them by completing the daily quest offered in Mechagon or completing the special world quest that will appear each day. You can also get the item called Contract Rust Bolt Resistance to help speed up the process as this item will allow you to get reputation from completing any world quest on Kul Tiras or Zandalar. Once you are exalted, you will need to purchase the mount for 500,000 gold from their Quartermaster Stolen Royal Vendor Bot, located here in Mechagon. Next is the X995 Mechanocat. To get the mount, go to this location here in Mechagon. Once there, purchase the Blueprint Mechanocat Laser Pointer from Quark Stuckgart for 500 gold. After you purchase the Blueprint, go to this location here and turn in the Blueprint to Pascal K1N6. When you turn in the blueprint, you'll now be able to craft the mount. The items needed to craft the mount are 8 spare crates, 5 energy cells, and 4 chain igniter coils. You can get spare crates by gathering up 250 spare parts, which drop from any mob on Mechagon. And you can get the energy cells along with the chain igniter coils from rares in Mechagon or the treasure chest around the zone. You can also craft the chain igniter coils from Pascal K1N6. Next is the Junk Heap Drifter. This mount has a less than 1% chance to drop off the rare Rust Feather that spawns here in Mechagon. He spawns anywhere between 15 minutes and 30 minutes. You can only attempt to get the mount once per day. Next is the Rusty Mechano Crawler. This mount has a less than 1% chance to drop off the rare Arachnoid Harvester that spawns here in Mechagon. He spawns anywhere between 15 minutes and 30 minutes. You can only attempt to get the mount once per day. Next is the Mechagon Peacekeeper. To get this mount, go to the dungeon Operation Mechagon and set the dungeon to Mythic Difficulty. You will then need to kill the boss HK8 Aerial Oppression Unit. He will have a low chance to drop the mount. Next is Aerial Unit R-21X. To get this mount, you will need to go to the dungeon Operation Mechagon and set the dungeon to Mythic Difficulty. You then will need to complete the hard mode version of this dungeon. To activate hard mode, you first will need to fight the first three bosses that have the HK8 aerial oppression unit flying over it. After the first three bosses are dead, you will need to kill the HK8 aerial unit boss. The next hard mode encounter you will need to activate is the KU-J0. You can activate the hard mode version by clicking on a pile of robot waste that is on the ground. After you kill that boss, the final part of the hard mode will be on the last boss fight and will entail you clicking a small red button on a pedestal that must be clicked before the encounter. Clicking the button will add a robot that does not do anything over the course of the fight but depletes its own energy bar from 100 to 0. Upon reaching 0 energy, the party will instantly wipe. To counter this mechanic, there will be 4 panels around the room that will activate when the robot reaches 35 energy. Roughly every 45 seconds. These panels will all display a color and an icon in a random order before flashing a red skull and activating an input sequence just before the final 10 energy countdown. After this input sequence, members of your group will have to make sure to click the panels in the correct order that they lit up in to bring the robot's energy back to 100. You will have to keep repeating this process until the boss is defeated. If you have a full party, this mount is guaranteed to drop. And if you do not have a full group, it will have a 20% chance to drop per person in your group. Next is the Child of Torkali. To get this mount, you'll need to complete the How to Train Your Dire Horn questline. To start this questline, pick up the quest called The Missing Handler from Natala located here in Zandalar. This quest will get you started on a long time gated quest chain that you'll need to complete. Upon completion of this quest chain, you'll be rewarded with the mount. You must be Horde to do this quest chain. 
Next are the Horrific Vision and Assault mounts. To unlock both Visions and Assaults, you will need to have completed the Najatara opening questline and have Azerite Essences unlocked. Then the Horde will be able to pick up a quest called Return of the Black Prince by heading to the City of Dizarador. And the Alliance version is currently bugged, you will have to first complete the Shadowlands opening questline and get out of the Maw. Then once you log out and log back in Boralas, you should receive the quest called An Unwelcome Advisor. These quests will get you started on a quest chain that will take you approximately 2 hours to complete. The first mount we are going to look at is the Mail Muncher from Horrific Visions. This mount has a chance to spawn from the 5 mailboxes that are scattered throughout the Ogremar and Stormwind Horrific Visions. The location of the Ogremar Horrific Vision mailboxes are here, and the location of the Stormwind Horrific Vision mailboxes are here. Once you're at the mailbox, click on it and it will have a chance to spawn the rare Mail Muncher or another random mob. If the Mail Muncher spawns, kill the rare, and then it will drop them out. Next is the Wicked Swarmer. To get this mount, you will need to acquire 100,000 Corrupted Mementos. You obtain Corrupted Mementos by killing creatures within a Horrific Vision and completing Horrific Visions. Once you have 100,000 Corrupted Mementos, speak to Rathian, and then you can purchase the mount. Next is the Springfur Alpaca. To get this mount, you first will need to get Gershaw Greens, which you can pick up from this area of Oldham. Once you get Gershaw Greens, you will need to find the Springfur Alpaca and feed it the Gershaw Greens on 7 different days. They do not have to be consecutive days. The Springfur Alpaca has a chance to spawn in these locations in Oldham, and it does not matter which Oldham Assault is up. The Springfur Alpaca has approximately a 3-6 hour respawn timer. Once you feed the Springfur Alpaca on 7 different days, you will receive the mount. Next is the Shadow Barb Drone. To get this mount, you first will have to wait for the Akira Oldham Assault to be up. Then once that Assault is up, you will need to go to this area of Oldham and pick up the quest called the Incredible Egg from a cluster of Void Touched Eggs. Once you complete that quest, you will receive the quest called Match the Hatch. After you complete that quest, you will have to wait for the next day to get started on the next quest. Each quest will be time gated by a daily lockout and the quest line is a total of 30 days. The last quest called My Own Drone will reward you with the mount. Next is the Waste Wander Sky Terror. To get this mount, it will require you to become exalted with the Oldham Accord. You can earn reputation with them by completing the dailies that they offer and through completing the assault that is up. Once you are exalted, you can purchase the mount for gold from the Oldham Accord Quartermaster located here in Oldham. Next is the Malevolent Drone. To get this mount, you will need to wait for the Akira Oldham Assault to be up. Once that assault is up, you will need to kill the Corpse Eater located here in Oldham. He has approximately a 5 to 30 minute respawn timer. He will have a small chance to drop them out. Next is the Waste Marauder. For this mount, you have to wait for the Amethet Oldham Assault to be up. Once that assault is up, you will need to kill Rotfester located here in Oldham. He has approximately a 45 minute to 2 hour respawn timer. He will have a low chance to drop them out. Next is the Drake of the Four Winds. For this mount, it does not matter which Oldham Assault is up. You will just need to kill Ishak of the Four Winds located here in Oldham. He has approximately a 2 to 3 hour respawn timer. He will have a very low chance to drop them out. Now we are transitioning over to the Veil of Eternal Blossoms Mogu Assault mount. This is the only Veil of Eternal Blossoms Assault that will provide any mounts. The first mount is the Clutch of Holly. This mount drops from the rare Holly located here in the Veil. Holly has a respawn timer of approximately 30 minutes to an hour. He will have a low chance to drop them out. Next is the Wren Stalwart Hound. This mount drops from Houndlord Wren located here in the Vale. His respawn timer is approximately 1 to 2 hours. He will have a small chance to drop them out. Next is Zin Lao. This mount drops from On Lee the Loyal located here in the Vale. His respawn timer is approximately 1 to 3 hours. He will have a low chance to drop them out. Next is the Rajani War Serpent. You will have to go through the entrance to the temple here and go underground to get to the rare Reloon. Reloon will have a very low chance to drop the pristine Cloud Serpent scale. Once you get that scale, you must speak to the vendor Zhang Ku, located here in the Vale, and redeem it for the Rajani War Serpent. Next is the Ivory Cloud Serpent. To get this mount, you will first need to get the Zantin Lasso. The best spots to farm for this lasso are the camps here in the Vale. Once you have the lasso, you will need to go to this location here and be approximately at this height on your flying mount a little bit above the temple gates. 
You will have to wait approximately an hour and a half to three hours for the Ivory Cloud Serpent to spawn. Once he has spawned, you will need to cast your lasso and capture him. If successful, you will see the Ivory Cloud Serpent in your bags. Once he has spawned, he flies very fast and is relatively small, and flies around the veil if you don't capture him right when he spawns. After you catch him, he will despawn after 10 seconds. I would highly suggest using the macro that I have provided in the description and spamming it so that when the Ivory Cloud Serpent does spawn, you will catch him immediately. One key thing to note here is that you can farm for this mount in a raid group. Next is the Elusive Quick Hoof. To get this mount, you first will need to purchase Seaside Leafy Greens Mix. The Horde can purchase the mix from Trader Nog, located here in Jazara Lore. The Alliance can purchase the mix from Cynthia Sprout, located here in Boralas. Once you have the mix, you will need to search for the Elusive Quick Hoof, and he has a chance to spawn at these locations in Voldoon. He has a spawn timer of approximately 3 to 6 hours. When he spawns, he will only be up for about 10 minutes. Once you find him, feed him the Seaside Leafy Greens mix, and then you will be rewarded with the mount in your bags. Next is Molly. To get this mount, you will need to complete the epic world quest, Dune Gorger Crow Log, located here in Oldham. This epic world quest is only up once every 6 weeks. Once it is up, you will need to kill Dune Gorger Crow Log for a small chance at getting the mount. Next is the Nihilotha Allseer. To get this mount, head to the Nihilotha The Waking City Raid. The entrance rotates between Oldham and the Vale of Eternal Blossoms every week. You will need to set the dungeon to Mythic Difficulty and kill Nazal. He will have about a 1% chance to drop them out. Next are the achievement mounts. You get the Blood Flank Charger on Horde side and the Ironclad Frostwolf on Alliance side from completing the achievement Two Sides to Every Tale, which is accomplished by completing both the Alliance and Horde War campaign questlines. You get the Wonderwing 2.0 by completing the Battle for Azeroth Pathfinder Part 2 achievement. You get the Snapback Scuttler from the Undersea Usurper achievement, which requires you to complete various achievements in Najatar. You get the keys to the Model W by completing the Mecha Dun achievement, which requires you to complete various achievements in Mechagon. You get the Ashari Bloat Ray by completing the Glory of the Palace Raider. You get the Wriggling Parasite by completing the Glory of the Nihilotha Raider. And you get the Black Serpent of Nazoth by completing the Through the Depths of Visions. It would take too long to explain how to complete each individual achievement, so I'll be making videos on how to complete these achievements at a later time. And those are all the mounts in this guide. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content. I also like to stream on Twitch. If you would like to come hang out on stream, I have provided a link to my Twitch in the description down below.